Hello, everyone, and welcome to the LinkedIn series in the pipeline. My name is Brian Ditton. I'm CEO of the appraisal technology company called Regora. Today, we have a special episode of In the Pipeline. For the first time, we have someone who's actually from Regora. Um, so joining me today is Mr. Ken Dix. Uh, Ken, do you want to give a quick background on yourself before we dive in? Sure. Um, so my role here at Regora is I am the uh, Director of Appraisal Compliance and Initiatives. Um, I joined the Regora team two year, two and a half years ago um, as part of this uh, this process of really reinvigorating and and reinventing the appraisal process for for lenders. Um, my background is I've been an appraiser since the uh, early 1980s. Um, I've done both residential and commercial and the last 10 years of my uh, banking experience was in an operational function of the appraisal risk director for a large regional bank here in the Northeast. Uh, so the Regora, the Regora project and the Regora um, theme here is to make this process better and, and um, just really enjoying everything we're doing. That is good to hear. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining me today. Like I said, we have a special episode because today we're presenting something um, pretty unique, I think in the industry and something new for us. One of the advantages that we have as Regor is that we get to work with, you know, hundreds of different lenders, tens of thousands of different vendors throughout the country. And so we have really, really good data insights in terms of what's going on uh, with the appraisal process. So for the first time ever, we're going to be releasing what we call the appraisal performance index. And essentially, this will show all the highlights for appraisals across the country in terms of stats as it relates to things like what are the average fees? How does that break down by region, um, by state, turn times, fee escalations, you know, all the different things that people care about. Um, the report that we're putting out publicly is going to be, you know, a little bit broader. You can see here, it doesn't necessarily dive into um, the hyper-specific details. But then you can, if you're a lender, book a private benchmarking session with us where we'll take your data and compare it to the granular data that we have, and you can see where you stack up against uh, the competition. So should be really exciting and helpful for folks. I wanted to dive in today with you, Ken, on a couple of the interesting you know, data elements that we actually have here, maybe talk through some of the commentary um, and uh, and you know give people a little bit teaser. Sure, um, it's great to help on the screen here, you have uh, turn times and, I remember back in 2016 when mortgage rates first dropped down below three and a half percent, there was a big rush for refinances, and that started to expose the concerns that people have with appraiser capacity. Appraisal turn times were getting very extended. Uh, the supply and demand imbalance was really starting to put a crimp in everyone's process, and a lot of eyes uh, got put on the appraisal process, whether it was the vendor performance or the, the lender's performance and the way that customers, you know, was the lender meeting the customer's expectations. If it was taking two to three weeks and that was adding on to their um, the time it would take to close a loan, it became very concerning to lenders that that part of the process uh, may have been slowing things down. So on the, the turn time issue, you know, um, you know, the other thing I want to say on that is metrics are not readily available for appraisal performance. Um, it's really, every lender operates in their own vacuum. They understand what's going on in their environment, but they may not know what's going on in their local um, their local markets and say broader markets on a statewide level. So what we've done is we've taken, um, taken measurements of the appraisal um, activity in our platform over the last year. And um, we, we've really honed in on what the trending is for turn times. Uh, we've broken it out to a regional level. So how the Midwest is performing compared to the Northeast and the south, south part of the country, as well as the Western part of the country. And from here, getting into the details, you can see where, where things are relatively healthy and move work very well. Uh, on a state-by-state -state basis. I mean, as you can see here, the, the peak for appraisal turn times measured on a business day was in March of 2022. We started to slide down as demand for appraisal services um, went down and there's more balance towards a 
supply and demand aspect. Uh, right now, things are pretty slow. The end of 22 really slowed down as far as volumes go. Uh, and those turn times moved down to the below six, six business day standpoint. Um, interesting, you know, interestingly enough, you know, there's a great correlation, there's a strong correlation between the number of appraisers that are in any given state and any given location and what their turn time is going to be. So really breaking down our data uh, for a lender to understand how they fit in their marketplace um, will give them you know, the opportunities to, to make some informed business decisions as they move forward with uh, making their processes better. Yeah, I think you put the nail on the head. You know, people will definitely have their own data, but don't know how they're comparing against others. So this is, you know, helpful in terms of that benchmarking. And to your point, there is big differences, although, you know, <clears throat> trends have come down significantly. And I think this is even down, even the beginning of 2022 is down pretty significantly from 2021. 2021, it was like 10, 15 days, you know, business days, depending on kind of where you were at. So that's come down dramatically. But to your point, there's still big variety. You know, if you look at Maine, still around like three weeks compared to someone like, you know, Georgia, Florida, where it's, you know, seven to eight days and getting into Utah where it's five days. So still big differences across, you know, regions. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting. So obviously we see this continued downward trend, seeing a similar one with fee escalations. So, you know, how often um, on a given order where it's, you know, initially disclosed at X, Y, Z price, how often the appraiser or AMC is going to come back with asking for a higher fee. Um, and, you know, both the like gross dollar amount average, and you can see the the percentage of fee escalations is coming down significantly. And Ken, do you think that's similarly just basically a factor of supply and demand here in terms of like appraisers relative to, you know, the volume? Yeah, I think uh, that, is, that is driving a lot of this activity. Um, you know, if you are approaching an appraiser and say, "Look, I need this appraisal done in five days or seven days," then that appraiser, if they already have a full a full stack of work that they're going to do, will come back for a fee increase. The other thing that drives this too, and it's kind of hard to zone in on, is is complexity of the property that the appraiser goes out to. So the appraiser lender may think there's one thing. Remember, lenders use standardized um, disclosures. So the typical single family house is going to cost X. Well, if an appraiser goes out there uh, and it is not your typical house, it doesn't really conform to that to the local marketplace, or it's going to take the appraiser additional time, the appraiser is going to come back for a fee escalation. But the trending that we are seeing is that the incidence of, of escalations is going down, and that's pointing very much towards a the supply and demand balance. Yeah, it's interesting when you talk about complexity, you know, it makes sense. It looks like, you know, West Coast, like California, big homes, you know, more expensive, things like that. Uh, I'm, I'm actually a little bit surprised at the Northeast and maybe I'm just biased because I'm, you know, specifically in like the New England area where there's a lot of like non-homogenous housing. So I guess maybe, you know, the other areas, Pennsylvania and other things that are being bucketed into this aren't aren't as complex in that regard. Yeah, that, the thing about the Northeast is there's a lot of mature markets in the Northeast. So that supply and demand aspect with the appraisers and the capacity is somewhat more in check. Now, you throw that out the window when you have you know much more extended drive times. So if you get out into like the western parts of Massachusetts or up into Vermont and Maine, where an appraiser has to cover a much broader geographic area, um, that's where you're going to see some variances here. Right. Um, awesome. So yeah, you know, as as we talked about earlier, we got a lot of different breakdowns in terms of turn times, fee escalations, order volume, you know, initially agreed upon fees versus the final fee. Um, one stat that I thought was interesting that was a little bit counterintuitive, you know, was the fact that this revision rate, so basically the percentage of orders that require revisions has, you know, gone up, nearly doubled. You know, one would think, hey, appraisers are doing less orders per week, they have more time to really focus, they're not being rushed on a given report, theoretically. But, you know, it turns out, maybe underwriters actually have more time on their hands now. And, you know, the no one wants to buy back a loan for appraisal discrepancies. And so we're seeing an increase in scrutiny here on the underwriting side. Is that kind of check out with how you would think about it, Ken? 
Uh, yeah, but I do want to qualify that. You know, you may have some more complex properties, like if you had, so for refinance activity, I know towards the end of 2022, we start seeing much more investor activity. Much more investor activity means much more market data has to be provided to the to the lender, and there's going to be more scrutiny there. Um, also, as the market slowed down, you probably saw an increase of ROV activity. Any ROV would be picked up in a revision rate because it, it reflects a revised report because the lender has gone back to the appraiser asking to, to have them consider additional information. Um, and you know, I don't see the appraisal risk scores going higher. Those are pretty standard, um, but that is something else that under, underwriters will use when they are going back to appraisers for revisions. Um, so those are, you know, those are your common sources for revisions. Um, you know, but, but to your point, I think my my suspicion is. Yes, there is a little more time now to scrutinize appraisal reports and to go back and to ask for um, more explanation for, you know, backup for the appraisal's conclusions. Um, but also the market is getting tougher, right? I mean, early 2022, you had a lot more comps to choose from. You get down to a slow market in November, December, and you have very few comps that you're pulling from. So that's going to start raising more questions. That's fair. And, you know, another factor to your point, maybe like the difference in purchase versus refi percentage and, you know, less people getting, you know, property relief from the GSEs and, you know, with low CU scores and needing to be a little bit more, you know, on top of things from the underwriting standpoint, because it's a purchase versus a refi. Um, that's, yeah, that's correct. And you also see a, you saw a higher percentage of uh, appraisals being ordered. You know, when you speak of the GSEs, you know, appraisal uh, waivers really declined significantly towards the end of the year. So um, if they don't have enough confidence to give a waiver, that's telling you that they need more insight into the market. Right. Awesome. Well, a lot of interesting stuff. We, you know, barely haven't even scratched the surface on a lot of this. Um, Ken, thank you for, you know, giving your kind of preliminary analysis on this. Like I said, folks, um, we're gonna be putting out, you know, the high level general version of this pretty soon here, depending on when this you know video drops. And then if you want to see the more in depth, you know, granular data, regional data, and, and have us compare it directly for you and give some insights on, you know, why you may be ahead or behind, um, you know, we are offering free private benchmarking sessions for folks. So interested in chatting with some of you and yeah, thank you for joining us here. Thank you, Brian. Have a great day.